Hey, uh, I wanted to do a devotion about intercession, because I love it, but I believe the Lord wants me to share my testimony, which I've always struggled with, because I don't know what to, what to put in, what to leave out, like what's too much to hear, and what's not enough to hear. I think I overthink about it too much, so I'm going to start by sharing, you know, I grew up in a home with my mom and dad, I, I lacked nothing, I had everything that a kid could possibly ask for, you know, every every time a new video game system came out, you know, I had it, I was very blessed, but I lived a very different life to myself. I never shared what was going on with me to anyone. I kind of kept it to myself, and over time, it really, really started to rear its ugly head. Well, um, so where do I start, where do I start with this? Uh, I don't know, why did I go this way, I, the way I did? For those who don't know, I was an addict for 14 years. I was addicted to do anything and everything that I can get my hands on. I combined everything, and I'm not bragging or boasting. I'm just trying to give you a picture. You know, I was one time I was addicted to alcohol, steroids, and cocaine all at the same time, and I was a very unstable person. Like I don't know what kept me together and able to, you know, go through life halfway. How, like, make it through the electrical apprenticeship, and that's a divine favor, I believe. Um, just staying alive for this long, it had to be God. I wasn't into God, or I didn't know really nothing about Him. I really wasn't sure why I didn't pursue God, or look into it, or go to church. I don't know if it's because I didn't see nothing real, or didn't feel nothing real. But I found out later in life that I had some pain, serious pain that I was holding from childhood trauma that, you know, some stuff happened to me and it kind of took my innocence. It really wrecked my whole being. But anyway, I was arrested around the age of 19. I thought that selling drugs would be a quick way to uh, make money. And I really didn't care who I sold it to. It didn't matter. There was no conscience or, or anything. Like I felt nothing. I, I, I numbed myself so much that I couldn't feel remorse. Forgive me. Uh, remorse about anything that I did. I hardened myself. So much. I um, I got a few little notes here. I just like it's like five sentences. I really don't know where to go with this. So God's gonna have to help me. But uh, I definitely feared responsibility. I was never a consistent person with anything, and I've hurt so many people. <laughs> and it, you know, it took me four years of being a Christian that I finally I'm finally let, let go and moving past it. It's not easy. Satan brings it up every day. And I get to choose to believe it. Or remember that I am a new creation. The old things have passed away. Everything's come new. And there's no way you would catch me crying on video. Five years ago. <laughs> I would never let anybody see me like this. But God changes hearts. It really does. Anyway, I don't know what I was saying. Uh, 
yeah. My first responsibility when I had my son, I, I guess I was so scared, I don't know. But I ran and I ran and I ran. And I just, I was so used to living in such a state of uh, chaos that if I was experienced peace, it, it, like I really experienced peace and I, I didn't like it. <laughs> That's pretty bad, man. Like, you're so used to everything being out of control. So when God brings peace to my life, it's like I gotta, I gotta disrupt this. It's weird. It's, it's weird thinking, man. It's like it's terrible thought patterns. But slowly, he's he's changing it, changing my mind and how I think. But I actually wrote down this question, and I and I actually actually had to uh, ask myself this because I did, I'm not even sure the answer. It says, did I like getting high? And, and I don't, I don't. I don't believe I did. I hated it. But it was the only thing I knew to escape what was going through in my mind and what was coming at me every day is the only way I knew. I mean, you could call that a cowardly way out or whatever you want to say. I don't care if it's the past, but I stayed on that road and until after my dad died. Which was over uh, over five years ago. That's when everything came to a head, man. Like I, I became really out of control. Uh, I believe that God foresaw something devastating fixing to happen in my life, and He had to open my eyes to see things that normal people don't see, and it drove me to Him, like. I was that hard-headed, I was that stubborn, in order for me to surrender, he had to take it to another extreme, and I thank him for that, every day, even though it was hard, I ain't got no tissues anywhere, uh, but finally on that day, when I surrendered to Christ, and like he said, like I said in the devotion yesterday, it's like, you were you wasn't looking for me, but I was looking for you. Or whatever. I got a bad memory. But now I still carried that pain for a while. And God had to humble me in order for me to finally give it to him and I'm still releasing it. And the terrible stuff, man, like there are so much, and I know there's so many people that's mad at me, like they hate me because of what I've done, and uh, I just pray they can have the heart to forgive me. But I mean, they're gonna have to pray. They're probably gonna need God's help because they can't forgive me on their own. I can't forgive others on my own either. But, but anyway, I've just entered into this new life four and a half years ago. I went from one extreme to the next, like I went from the the drug addict that wasn't in church to a, a like a super religious hypocrite. That was my next stage, I guess. I don't know. Paul went through it too before his conversion. But over time it took God to show me that's not how you're supposed to live either. And then he showed me how much he loves me, that I'm his son. And he's proud of me. He's proud of me for not. I, I, I didn't do anything. I don't, I don't know if there's anything I did that can, he can be proud of. Uh, oh, like we had a group one time, and on a piece of paper, it had 10, ten lines, 10, 10 numbers, 1 through 10. And it said, Name 10 things you love about yourself. And I looked at the paper, and I, I could not. I could not find anything to put on the number one line. Like, I had to rack my brain, man. I'm like, is my image of myself that bad? And that was an awakening. You know, finally I'm starting to learn to love myself. And 
not in the arrogant way. You know, I've been there. That's not loving yourself. That's that's something else. But uh, anyway, I think I guess that's it. God's very patient, and He's always faithful. Now, if you go by feelings, you may feel like God hates you and all this stuff is happening because of this and that. He doesn't hate you. Sometimes He lets you live the way you want to live for a while until you become broken. And it's when you're broken that's when you experience God on an intimate level. Pride is an ugly thing. I've been spiritually prideful, and that's terrible. But uh, I asked God for a verse about, you know, describe my life, my testimony, or something. Because in Teen Channels, that's what they taught us, you know, pick a verse for your testimony. And I found one. It's, it's perfect. It's in Isaiah 57, verse 16 through 19. For I will not accuse you forever. And I will not always be angry. For then the spirit would grow weak before me, even the breath which I had made. Because of his sinful greed, I was angry. So I struck him. I was angry and hid, but he went on turning back to the desires of his heart. Man, that describes me so much. I have verse 18. I have seen his ways. This is how good God is right here. But I will heal him. That's what he's doing right now. I will lead him and restore comfort to him and his mourners. Creating words of praise, the Lord says. Peace, peace to the one who is far or near. And I will heal him. And yeah, that's, that's what he does. He's, our, he's my healer. He's my father. He's my lover. He's everything that I could even ask for. And when you just talk to somebody and try to tell them, I don't know how to put it. It's just so much. But anyway, I'm a mess. So, uh, hope this encourages somebody. That's just very little bit of my life but it's enough to realize that God can change someone it's possible through the power of the Holy Ghost through the blood of Jesus and the love of the Father those three things right there can change someone now it's been it's been hell changing change hurts it hurts so bad but it is so worth it if you could push through the pain. If you could push through those seasons of pain, in which when I, you know, when I started Teen Challenge, that was the word God gave me. He said, "Your season of pain is beginning." Boy, when you hear something like that, it's, it's like, uh oh. <laughs> but I see now the fruit. From that season, it's it's becoming um, abundant in my life right now. My character, the, the change in my character. But anyway, but I said I just pray, uh, God will show you who you are and who who you really are and what you're made for. Good night.